This Saturday marks the 60th anniversary of one of Montana's worst tragedies, the huge Hebgen Lake earthquake. A 1959 quake killed 28 people. Most of them were in the Madison River Canyon east of the lake, but the lake itself was heavily affected. MTN's John Shearp has the story of two men who were there. The epicenter of the quake was actually closer to the east end than either the canyon, where so many people were killed, or the dam at the west end of the lake and it hit hard. It lasted for a good minute. Brooke Cunningham is the host of the Cabin Creek Campground. He was camped on the north end of Hebgen Lake with his father when the ground started to shake. I had no idea what it was. His father told him it was an earthquake, and then they heard something. And I'm assuming it was part of the noise from the mountain coming down, it was quite loud. And then they heard something else. The noise from the lake. You could actually hear the waves on the lake going back and forth. Hebgen Lake stretches east from here for miles. Now, here's what happened to it in 1959. It was hit by something called a seiche. That's a big wave that runs from one end of the lake to the other, kind of like water sloshing back and forth in a dishpan. Those waves built up, coming back and forth and back and forth, and eventually swept right over the top of this dam. Well, we could hear the waves rumbling and could actually see some of the wave action uh, because it was a full moon. Cunningham says it took about 17 minutes for the waves, some up to 20 feet tall, to sweep from one end of the 14 mile lake to the other. But that wasn't all. There were cracks everywhere in the ground. We couldn't walk anywhere. Jerry Yetter noticed the same thing where he lived on Duck Creek. The earthquake dropped the road about 12 to 15 feet straight, just a cliff. He and his wife had narrowly escaped from their home. Chimney to the left sheared off and fell on the porch next to her. She escaped with minor injuries, but a guest in a cabin they rented was spooked. He put his wife in a car and headed toward town but this was the road with the newly formed 12-foot cliff. And he went over that, tipped the Cadillac upside down. Trapped inside, the man broke a window to climb out. And almost cut his arm off. Yetter's wife, though injured herself, drove the man to the hospital in Bozeman. Jerry went out to block the road to prevent any more crashes. He was joined by a semi-driver. An aftershock would hit, and we'd both be in the center of the road rubbing together. And we'd, we'd let that go, and a half an hour later, another aftershock had hit, and he'd be down in the ditch on that side, and I'd be down in the ditch on the other side. Back at the lake, Brooke Cunningham wasn't going anywhere. There was no possible way that we could bring the truck back out and we could see easily in some of the areas where the road was missing. The next day, after people downstream of the dam at Refuge Point had been rescued, a helicopter returned to pick up Brooke and his dad. The night of the quake was absolutely unbelievable. I'd never been in anything that was even close to that. At the other end of the lake, the dam held. But engineers, worried that it wouldn't hold up to aftershocks, hired Jerry Yetter to keep an eye on it. And I had to go down every hour and check the dam and see if it was still there. He radioed his report to another man south of Ennis, who would then pass the message up the line. Downstream of the dam, the blocked Madison River was rapidly forming Quake Lake. It soon inundated the cabins at Riverside Resorts. Some can still be seen where the water left them, in a place locals call the Ghost Village. It's not far from where Brooke spends his summers. Believe it or not, I was in the Loma Prieta earthquake also. It was about the same size as the Hegben quake. But Brooke says there's no comparison. This was the biggie. There's no question about it. It was the biggie. At Hebgen Lake, I'm John Shearer for MTN News. And Jerry Yetter, who's now 87 years old, says he was able to figure out a way 
to straddle the 12 to 20 foot cracks in the road with his car in order to get mail delivered to his neighbors mm -hmm. for a week after the quake. It was really uh, an amazing wow. story.